What's the simplest way to install WordPress? And if that's a question on your mind, you probably have seen many different methods and different ways people are telling you how you can do so. But if you're still confused about which method you should choose, then you've clicked on the right video. Because today, I'll show you four really simple methods on how you can install WordPress. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Yaz from Brainstorm Force, and we're the company behind the most popular WordPress theme out there, Astra. And we create content about our latest product updates, as well as tutorials for beginners and non-coders. So if you're interested in any of that content, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on notifications. Now let's talk about the four methods I'll be discussing in this video. First, I'll talk about installing WordPress through your own web host, usually at a click of a button. This is the easiest method. And method number two is installing WordPress via your cPanel. Now it's a little bit more complex and maybe an intermediate level method. And then method number three is probably the most complex method is installing WordPress manually using an FTP client. And lastly, I'll also talk about installing WordPress on your local machine, which is also a very easy method. Now this method's a little bit different from the first three because the first three is all about installing WordPress on your live web hosted website, whereas this one is about installing WordPress on your local machine. But anyway, these are the four methods we'll be discussing in the video. And if you want to jump to any particular method you're interested in, I'll leave timestamps in the progress bar below. Now this video is only a brief overview of the different methods you can use to install WordPress. So if you want a full step-by-step -step tutorial for any of these methods, please let me know in the comments below. And once you have WordPress installed, you can continue to create your website and customize it by installing a theme and adding your content. If you're looking for a theme for your WordPress website, I strongly recommend Astra, a theme used by millions which comes with a library of fully functional website designs that you can install with one click. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's start with method number one. Now this is for those of you that might not have the most prior experience with WordPress and just want to get straight into the action without having to go through a lot of steps to do so. It's also the quickest method, so if you don't want to spend too much time setting up WordPress itself, then this method is for you. This method is when the web host does everything and sets up WordPress for you. Most web hosts in 2021 do feature this option as part of their hosting plans. If your current web host does not provide this feature, you can try out method number two or method three. Or alternatively, you could even connect your existing domain to a new host that includes this feature using our tutorial on the top right corner of your screen now. And I'll be showing you this demonstration using SiteGround as the web host, which is a great web host in my opinion, with reasonable pricing plans and amazing support. SiteGround also makes it super easy to install WordPress because they do everything for you. All you have to do is sign up and choose a hosting plan of your choice. And just a little disclaimer that some of these menus and pages on these websites might look a little bit different from this tutorial because a lot of these websites do have a bit of an update every once in a while. You'll also have to purchase a domain name or connect an existing domain to SiteGround first. If you're looking to purchase a domain, we recommend you purchase one through Google Domains. You can learn more about Google Domains in our Google Domains review. Or if you have an existing domain and want to switch to SiteGround, as I mentioned before, we do have a tutorial for that as well. And once your domain is connected, SiteGround actually gives you the option to install WordPress straight away. All you have to do is click this button and enter your desired login details and password, and you're good to go. And in only a matter of minutes, SiteGround will get WordPress up and running on your website. And as you can see, it's all good to go. Super easy, right? And you can get a similar experience through Cloudways as well, which is a managed cloud hosting service, and they can set up WordPress for you very easily as well. And if you want to check out SiteGround or Cloudways, I'll leave links for both in the description below. Now let's move on to method number two. Now method number two is where you can install WordPress via the cPanel. cPanel is essentially a control panel for your hosting where you can configure everything to do with the under the hood aspects of your website. Now this method is a little bit more complex than method one because you do have to navigate through a few different menus to have your website set up. And cPanel might look a little bit intimidating. Don't worry, I was there too. <laughs> but it's actually a lot easier to use than it looks. And this method is for those of you that are using a host that do not provide a single click pre-installation of WordPress for you. Now I'm showing you this demonstration using HostGator to show you the cPanel method because SiteGround doesn't actually use cPanel anymore. They have their own control panel, which I think is a little bit more beginner friendly, but anyone can learn the cPanel method as well. To access your cPanel, all you have to do is log on to your web host and find the cPanel menu via your hosting settings. And this is what cPanel looks like. It's a little bit intimidating, but all you have to do is scroll down until you find a familiar icon over here under Softaculus. 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 I can never say that right. And all you have to do is click on that icon. And then it will take you onto a page where it tells you a little bit about WordPress. From here, you can continue to start the installation. And from there, you can configure your installation by typing in your website details, 
choosing the domain where you want to install WordPress, as well as entering your login credentials for your WordPress dashboard. And once you hit the install button, that's all you have to do. cPanel will take care of the rest for you and begin installing WordPress. Once that's done, it will look just like this. And from there, you have the freedom to install a theme of your choice. I recommend Astro, add your content, and customize however you feel like. And that's it for method number two. Now onto method number three. And this is by using an FTP client to install WordPress. This is the most manual method out of the ones in this video, and also the most complex one because of that. And if you're a user that likes to try more complex methods and consider yourself tech savvy, then this can be a good method for you. Otherwise, I'd only recommend this method if you're not able to use method one or two that I mentioned earlier in the video. To understand this method, you gotta remember that a website basically consists of files and folders. So what we're gonna be doing is downloading WordPress from wordpress.org, and we're gonna upload all the WordPress related installation files onto our website through the FTP client. The FTP client just helps transfer the files from our computer to the live website. So the first thing you need for this is an FTP client, and I recommend FileZilla. Once you have FileZilla downloaded and installed, you can go to wordpress.org and download the latest version of WordPress, which is WordPress 5.8 at the time of this video. And if you want to find out what the latest features are in WordPress 5.8, my teammate Yuvraj has created a really cool video explaining the different features in WordPress 5.8. You can watch it by clicking the top right corner of this video. Once you have the WordPress files downloaded, you can unpack them and it should look something like this. A bunch of files and folders. Then you can open your FTP client and then locate all the files that we just unpacked on the left-hand column. And then you have to connect your FTP client to your website. And to do that, you actually have to go into your web host and find your FTP details. Usually you can find this within your cPanel, but for this demonstration, I'm showing you using SiteGround. And on SiteGround, we're using the alternative control panel that SiteGround has, and it's really easy to find your FTP settings. You just go on the left-hand side menu and find the FTP settings. And from here, you might have to create a user. And once you have your user, usually an email address, and a password of your choice, you can bring these details back into the FTP client FileZilla and use these to connect to your website. Since this video is just a brief overview of the different methods we can use to install WordPress, if you guys want a comprehensive step-by-step -step tutorial on any of these methods, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to create a video about that for you guys. And once you have your FTP client connected to your website, you can select all your files and begin uploading them. And once all your files are uploaded, we go back onto our web host and then we have to find our database settings. We'll have to create a new database and also add a new user onto this database. Make sure you keep note of all the usernames and passwords for your database because you'll have to use it in the next step. Type in the URL for your WordPress admin page. It will be your URL name slash WP admin. And once you go there, it'll prompt you to install WordPress onto your website. This is because we've already uploaded all the files that we need to install WordPress. And if you set up your database correctly, you can proceed very easily. All you have to do is fill in your database details, and once that's all verified, you can begin configuring WordPress as you normally would with the other methods as well. And there you go, you'd have successfully installed WordPress manually on your website. Even though this method is quite manual and does involve a few extra steps, it's still actually quite simple to get WordPress installed with this method. And that's it for method number three. Now let's move on to the final method, method number four, installing WordPress on your local machine. And this method is for those of you that want to design or build your WordPress website locally before uploading onto the live web host. It's really easy to do so as well. First thing you have to do is install a software called Local by Flywheel. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. And once you start up the software, this is what it looks like. It looks like you haven't created any sites yet. You can press this big green button to create your first local site. You can give it any name that you want. And just like any other WordPress installation, we're going to need a username and password. And what's really cool now is that Local will go ahead and create your website for you, including WordPress. And that's why this method is really easy as well. You don't have to do anything manually because Local does it all for you. And there we go. Looks like it's all done. You can see a toggle right here that says Stop Site. So it looks like our site is actually functional right now. And we can press this Open Site button, or you can also open the Admin Panel here. We're going to Open Site now and it opens up on our web browser. And as you can see, WordPress is already installed and good to go. And that's it. That's how you set up WordPress on your local machine, really, really simply using local by Flywheel. And once you've finished designing your website on your local machine and you're ready to move that onto your live web host, I've got a tutorial that shows you exactly how to do that. So if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. But if you do consider yourself more tech-minded and want to try a bit more of a complex solution to set up your website locally, 
then there are methods like using WAMP or XAMPP. We do have full guides on how you can use these to set up your local website. And if you're interested, I'll leave some links in the description below. And those are the four really simple methods you can use to install WordPress. Comment down below and let me know which method you'll be using to install WordPress for yourself. But before you click away, make sure you click on the logo over here to subscribe, or you can even check out even more of our content by clicking over here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.